Hi friends, I am Viral Shah, Senior Instructor and Head of Investing Education with Shere Khan Education. The hospitality sector went through a serious downturn during the pandemic, leading to severe losses for hotels and tourism industry. However, the recent GDP data reveals that the trade in hotel segment has witnessed considerable growth, although on a lower base. Channel checks with some five-star hotels indicate that hotel occupancies are estimated to touch new highs in some select hotels in Mumbai Metropolitan in August. As per HBS NROC, average rates and revenue per available room continue to be higher than their pre-pandemic levels for July, although seasonally it was a weak month. In July 2022, Bangalore recorded the highest occupancy rate, 74 to 76%, followed by Pune and Mumbai. The recovery in hotel and tourism industry has been on the back of easing supply side constraints, pent up demand in leisure travel, weddings, social events, extended stays, spiritual and medical tourism, and government delegations. Based on the expected turnaround in the Indian hotel and tourism industry, we believe that Indian hotels would be the key beneficiary of the improving demand. Indian hotels has presence in the luxury, business and leisure hotel segments, offering warm hospitality and world-class service. The company manages close to 20,850 rooms, including India and abroad. Internationally, it has presence in the Maldives, the US, South Africa, the Middle East, the UK and Malaysia. International operations contribute close to 30% of group sales. Indian Hotels operates brands such as Taj Vivanta, Selections, Ginger, Ama Stays and Trails, The Chambers and Cumin. Indian Hotels has chalked out a strategy to pursue expansion of its portfolio and destinations within India. It is adding 325 rooms in its Taj Hotels portfolio at the Taj Exotica Resort and Spa in Dubai and the Taj Wellington News in Chennai. Its expansion plans for other brands include the following. Ginger has a portfolio of 85 hotels across 50 cities, including 28 under development. F522 saw a good recovery in business as it reached near 95% of pre-pandemic levels. It also saw increased revenue from its food and beverages outlets and increased fees from managed properties. Ama Stays and Trails is a family-centric homestay brand developed for extended and exclusive stays. It has a portfolio of 80 bungalows with 47 in operations and 33 in pipeline. Cumin is a culinary and food delivery platform with a presence in 20 cities. It has an online presence via the Cumin app for deliveries and offline presence through Cumin shops, QSR and Cumin food trucks. The Chamber is a business club with a presence across eight landmark Taj hotels in India, Dubai, London and New York. Indian Hotels has embarked on a strategic initiative Avan 2025, under which it would improve its average room rates and EBITDA margin by the following initiatives. Firstly, it will increase management fees to Rs 400 crore from Rs 231 crores. Management fees contribute to 42% of revenue and would increase to 50% in the next two years. Secondly, it will add more members to the Chambers business and reach revenue of Rs 150 crore from Rs 85 crores. It plans to increase its member base from 2,400 plus members to 3,000 members. Cumin is expected to touch revenue of Rs 1 billion in next two to three years. The company plans to add 3,500 incremental rooms in the next three years on a management fee basis. Fourthly, Ginger is estimated to add close to Rs 225 crores in FY24 with margins in metro cities reaching 55% and in other cities reaching 40-45% to by FY26. Overall, Indian hotels standalone revenue will report a growth of 25.7% CAGR over FY22 to FY25. The company is estimated to reach a 35% EBITDA margin by FY24 on back of following. First, operational leverage in room and food and beverage business. Secondly, new businesses such as the Cumin, the Chambers and Arma would contribute 40-50% to 50 of EBITDA as the EBITDA margin in these businesses is in the range of 70-80%. to 
And thirdly, it will increase its management contracts in overall rumor inventory in FY24 and FY25. Besides these operational initiatives, the company will incur a minimal capex of rupees 400 crores per year over the next three years. Indian hotels will also focus on cash generation through the following initiatives. Firstly, it will restructure the balance sheet by managing assets, monetizing non-core assets, and maintaining a healthy capital structure. Secondly, the company looks at monetizing a mix of the following. A. Land banks, hotels at non-strategic locations, and sale of investments. And B. Monetize a few international assets and offload a stake in CROC by bringing in a strategic partner. It successfully concluded QIP and rights issue, raising funds which will be used to pay off debt and consolidate the company's strategic investments to simplify holdings, which will increase the balance sheet strength. Indian Hotels is looking at a free cash flow generation of Rs. 1000 to Rs. 1500 crore per year. Q1 FY23 was a phenomenal quarter for Indian Hotels with revenue growth of 267.5% to Rs 1,266 crores and the company turning profitable at Rs 170 crores from a loss in Q1 FY22. The recovery in revenue per available room, average room rate and occupancy levels aided revenue and profits. Revenue of its subsidiaries also went up by 3.7 times year on year. Based on a strong turnaround expected in the industry, we have a positive view of the stock. At the current market price of 312.5 rupees, the company is valued at 46.6 times FY23 and 34 times FY24 earnings. Although the company is currently overvalued on the valuation band, it is a turnaround story and technically investors can enter the stock if it corrects to Rs. 280 to Rs. 290 levels. That's all folks, this is Vizal Shah signing off. Happy investing. This should not be treated as a recommendation. Please conduct your own analysis or consult a financial advisor before investing.